hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Welcome back to episode 98 of Come Lose It. I'm Matt Duncan. I'm the host of the show. You know, losing your losing some weight. A lot of shit going on. You're going to lose your mind. I'm coming to you live from the family cottage of my wife. <clears throat> we recorded here a couple years ago after the Leafs lost to the Montreal Canadiens. And, you know, it was a spiritual place to be able to witness such a disaster. Thankfully, they, they're long done by, by this time this year but hockey's over we'll get to that we'll get to the vegas golden knights we'll we'll get to that and all that other shit because this is the opening turd and we're coming to you live from magneta one because we like to take this podcast on the road sometimes sometimes we take it to to hawaii sometimes we take it to nova scotia to winnipeg this is a world podcast thank you to all my listeners who are coming in from everywhere, who are coming in from Germany, who are coming in from the UK. I'm loving it. I'm loving to see you guys listening. As you know, I don't really promote this. I kind of leave it out there. It's just like I, I'm just like I'm fishing out there. I'm leaving that lure out there. And it's got it's got some nice glitter on it. And it's shiny and it's spinning. And sometimes you guys you take a you take a bite. You take a bite and you try it out and you like it. Some people come back, some people don't come back. That's okay. That's how podcasts work. But this is a journey. This is a journey that's been going on for a, a damn near a decade. Damn near a decade. <sighs> but what can I say, folks? Uh, Canada is burning. You know, it's, it's been a little bit of a dicey situation coming up here. Wasn't sure if it was going to be healthy enough. Uh, a lot of wildfires going on right now hard to tell what the air quality is up here we just had to kind of wing it you look at you look at a town to the east you look at a town to the west you're hoping that you're you're hoping that you ain't getting to get smoked out i was a little bit worried i was a little bit worried that there was going to be like smoke on the water do 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 but there wasn't there wasn't i felt like there was uh the first couple days we were up here there, there was like a little bit but for the most part, pretty good, pretty good. So heading back soon, but I wanted to get this in because it's episode 98. We're getting closer to 100. Wanted to get that one up here. I had it on my mind to get that Karnchana Cottage podcast in. Next one, 99, will obviously be in the hometown stopover back home in Newmarket. Lots to talk about. Got a note here that says A and W is horrible. <laughs> it really is. You know, they really, they really took us, they took us for a like, like a, a little joke when they started having veggie patties and vegan patties and all this stuff there. You thought like, oh, they're doing, they're at the forefront. They're they're trying something different here, but you know, they got the cold root beer, but they're. I don't know if it's just the one near my place. I've probably been there twice in my life. Terrible. Terrible. Hey, if it, I'm at the age now. If I'm going to have fast food, if you're going to have fast food, it better be damn good. The fries better be damn hot. Okay? A&W, that chubby little <laughs> balding man who's been doing the commercials forever. I don't know if he's been affected by this lockout at all. Obviously not. Maybe they went from making 40 commercials a year to 20. That would hurt if he's dependent on that, but I'm sure he's just a contract guy. I don't think he's... He ain't, he ain't working them rates. You can't be working them rates when you've been the, the face of their campaign for 15 to 20 years. Jesus. That's a conundrum from for every actor if that is something that you'd want to do. I don't know if that is something that I would want to do. At this point in my life, yeah, sure, I'll be like the face of Arby's. I'll be the face of Osmos. I'll be the face of Kentucky Fried Chicken. Sure, I'll do it now. But uh, my type, my body type, they don't like to flaunt that too much. Those are the real people that eat fast food. I do have the body of that type of person. I, uh, I'm not fit like I used to be. 
one time in my life. And we're going to get into that in the fitness update because I, I do have a proclamation to make. But we got to shout out my girl Betty Holmes. You know her as Elizabeth Holmes. You know we followed her on this podcast. We've watched her go from trial to trial. She's been guilty. She's been pregnant. She's tried to avoid uh, you know jail time because she was pregnant. And to be honest with you, it worked. I think it did work for a little bit. I think that's the Betty I know. That's the one who can work the system, you know? But she did have to report to jail. She's going to do 11 years. She's going to do 11 years. There's no getting out of that. That's a federal crime. There, there ain't no there ain't no parole for that. She either gets that shit appealed and she's free or she serves that sucker. She's spending her 40s. She's spending her 40s because she's my age. Entire 40s in jail. That whole decade. She'll survive. She'll run that place. I bet you she's already got like three cartons of cigs in there. She's been bartering those around, getting other stuff with them. I bet you she is rolling in that shit. She's got that rich husband. He's probably filling that canteen. You know, he's making sure it's full up so she's she can get what she wants from the from the cafeteria there. She's probably even got plastic forks and knives. You know, it's low security, a minimum security prison I heard. But man, what an epic thing to happen if you don't know what i'm talking about my my world listeners you've got to watch a couple of docs you know one's called the dropout that's the show i think and that there's a doc though with her and it's just she really she really knows how to bullshit she knows how to bullshit but she went a little too far a little too far her and her, her partner there he's doing time too they're both doing time it's so crazy And then it's official, guys. It's official. Little segue to another person doing time. We don't know how much yet, but that 70s show is officially ruined. It's officially stained. It was partially stained. It was dipped in shit through all these trials. But Danny Masterson, Danny Masterson, has been guilty of two counts of rape, and he could get 30 years in prison. Right now, he is in holding, he is in jail, and he will be in jail all summer waiting for that sentence. They won't know. That could get postponed again. So that's what his... Could you imagine? And the worst part about the whole thing with Danny Masterson is he made he, he did these rapes during the show, during the peak of the show. What a bummer. Because, you know, high school, it just brings me back to high school. I That show started when I started high school. And it just was great. I was starting to get more into 70s rock and stuff. It was just a blast, for goodness sake. And now it's ruined. And that Nickelodeon remake they did is garbage. I can't watch that. I did. I didn't like it. I was just waiting for someone to get some some goo dropped on their head. It was so Nickelodeon. Just a big goo fest, that show. Way too young, okay? If you're going to have people that young, they got to be like faking 18 or 19 like Mila Kunis did. She wasn't playing a 14-year-old. You know, she she lied. She lied. It's too weird. I don't like it. And the, the, the writing's too heavy. You know, the, the, the Turners, they're just getting too old. They're getting too old to be writing this type of sitcom. You can feel it. You can feel it in the rain. The Bonnie and Terry Turner, they're they are in their 80s, for goodness sake. But they are legends. They are legends. They did, uh, you know, Third Rock from the Sun. They were SNL writers. Whatever. God, do we have to remake everything, for goodness sake? <sighs> you know, there's some people that haven't done a rape, haven't done a fraud, and it's time to wish them a happy birthday.
Okay, this is a big one. There's some big names, lots of people. I don't know what it is about June 15, but there are stars in and out. We got Helen Hunt. She's 60. You know her. As good as it gets. Mad about you. Twister. 60 years old. 60. I think she's technically a senior citizen now. Helen Hunt. The great Helen Hunt. So what was she when Twister came out? She was probably like 35. 35 or something like that. Courtney Cox is 59 friends scream that's it what else can you think of that courtney's done cougars or whatever <laughs> they want to watch cougars she's married to david what's his name god my brain is mush it's from the fires it's from the damn fires arquette david arquette Leah Remini, 53. You know her story. You know how she left Scientology in her, her early 40s, did the shows. She's trying to, you know, she was at the Danny Masterson trial. She was giving it all. She was friggin' giving it all, you know? Um, she's a bit of a, she's a bit of a firecracker, you know, the old, uh, what you might call it days, the, uh, Kevin James, uh, <laughs> King of Queens. <laughs> Speaking of another sitcom hero, Neil Patrick Harris is 50. 50 years old for Doogie Howser. He's nifty, he's 50. My grandpa had a nifty 50 t shirt. I hope to get one made for when I turn 50, if I do. Who knows with these fires, folks? Jake Busey is 52. What happened to Jake Busey? What happened to friggin' Jake Busey? God damn. His dad just, he just was like, fuck this, I can't, I can't anymore. Jim Belushi, 69. Ice Cube, 54. Julie Haggard, he's 68. These are all big names. Jim Varney, dead, long dead. Ernest P. Wuerl, Ernest P. Wuerl, he died 23 years ago. But he would have been, you know, 73, something like that. Man, he, 51. He was hacking darts, though. Hacking darts, Jim Varney. A different era, folks. Some some guys just hack darts. They could have been the happiest. You heard in his voice. You heard that that hackity dackity dart in his voice. And really, that's where I want to end it. I feel like we've gone on long enough with this. We've gone on long enough with the birthdays. I will say that, uh, that Tom Hanks' brother Jim Hanks is 62, and uh, he, he weirdly looks a lot like him, but not quite all the way like him. And he does sound like him, though, and apparently he does. Any voiceover work, any voiceover work, Jim Hanks is going to be doing it for Tommy Boy. Fitness update. Okay, let's get to the fitness update. Okay, so things are good. Things are good. Things are good. My back has been pretty good. I've, you know, I've been up here at this cottage. I've been doing some crazy type of labor I've been really testing it doing a lot of you know boat crossfit as they were have been doing a lot of exercising I was getting back into it I've just kind of resigned myself I've, I've accepted the fact folks that my 30s they're fat 30s you know I'm not I'm not morbidly obese or anything but I, I'm not where I want to be have been my entire 30s it's been a fat 30 a friggin fat 30 I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it because you know what I want? I want a fit 40. I want to be in the fit 40s, folks. So I got to, I got to like really push myself. I got to, I got to, like we're going to talk about something in the health news. There is hope in every corner of this, this dieting world. And you know, when I hear someone that has, has overcome some, some major health issues, with fast food, you know, the last time, you know, we've talked a lot about Jared on here and he was that, he was the last guy and it just really blew up. And now there, there's another guy. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Hopefully he doesn't have that Jared track record because you just can't take that risk. I don't think, I don't think, <laughs> I don't want to give too much away until we get into it, but you just, uh, you just never know these days. Uh, <laughs> But fitness-wise, you know, I've been doing a lot of labor. Just being up here walking around, it takes forever to get anywhere. 
So you have to you have to force yourself to do some labor, which is good, which is good. Like, so I don't feel like I've been sitting on the couch eating garbage, but uh, it could be better. I need to get back into that routine. I need to get back onto that fasting. I, I just so desperately wish I could do it, but uh, the world's dark and it's burning, folks. <laughs> what am I supposed to do here? What am I supposed to do? I got to have a drink. I got to I got to eat some crap sometimes. I got to eat late sometimes because we're on fire here, folks. It's going to be a wild summer. Wild summer. So keep doing your back exercises, stretch it out, get the board and and everything should be good. Health news. News that is health related. Okay, health news, health news, here we go. Here is the big story, everybody. This is friggin' nuts. Like, (laughs) I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I was so happy because it's been a while, and especially that it was McDonald's that this guy chose to do this kind of diet, you know? I saw the, the headline in the star. I will post the link. Make sure you check the show notes out. Forget Ozempic. Man says he lost more than 50 pounds by eating McDonald's for 100 days. He posted two photos of himself before and after. He looks fantastic. The second photo, he looks so much better. He's lost his gut. He's thinned out. He looks great. He looks great. So what what is it? What is this? He's 57 too. You know how hard it is to lose weight in your late 50s? He went from 238 pounds to 179.5, and his only rules that he followed were he had to eat half of whatever he was ordering. So if he got a Big Mac, he had to eat half of it. If he got fries, he had to eat half of it. Always half. Half, half, half. Three meals a day, half. So really, uh, yeah, yeah, like, I mean, maybe he was only getting like 12, 12 to 1,500 calories a day. If he's only eating half, what does he do with the other half? Does he throw it out or does he save it for the next day? Because we know these burgers, they can last for decades. I probably would keep them. That's what they're not talking about. Did he save the burgers? Burgers and fries, they, they, yeah, I mean, the fries get pretty bad. They're, they're pretty much inedible as soon as they get cold and you cannot reheat McDonald's fries. But, but the burgers, maybe maybe that's a different story, you know? Maybe he saved a lot of money, too, because he was eating half a Big Mac one day and the other half the next day, just half and half, filet of fish, half here, half there. He never had sugary drinks. He never had any of the McCafe stuff. No sugary drinks at all, no pop. And he also quit booze, so he stopped drinking and exclusively just drank water, 80 to 90 ounces of water per day. And you would say like, okay, so he probably lost a lot of weight because he wasn't having as many calories. He wasn't drinking any sugary pops, but how's his inside stuff, right? How's the old inside test? How's his cholesterol? Everything's amazing. Everything improved. It uh, (laughs) doesn't make any sense. It's uh, pretty crazy. It's pretty damn crazy. I would talk with you with points, but... I mean, his his triglycerides dropped by 205 points. If you know what that means, you know what that means. That's something once you start getting your cholesterol, you know, changes. Once you start following it, then you start to know the numbers a bit. But his cholesterol is a 65. That's that's pretty good. It's pretty good. His blood sugar, good. He was pre-diabetic before his McDiet, and now he's in a healthy range. So pretty crazy. They do say that these results are the exact opposite of what happened to Morgan Spurlock when he did his super size me doc. But here's the problem with that is he wasn't eating half. He was drinking the pops. He also was an alcoholic. And they never talked about that when they were like doing tests on his liver being like, Jesus, your liver's fucked. You're shot, bro. And he's like, yeah, it must be these McChickens. But he was, yeah, he's, he was a really bad alcoholic. So that was a lot. A lot of the health issues Morgan Spurlock was having was uh, not talked about, which is the problem with, uh, I mean, it's a good omen for understanding how documentaries are something that you just can't fully believe. You can take something, oh, that's an interesting thing, but there's a lot of 
formalities, a lot of different things that can, uh, you know, go into some of these tests and whatnot. So yeah, this guy's a hero. I just want to say it's been a while since we've had someone. I know the guy that only ate Big Macs because this is a this is a fast food fitness podcast, folks. Uh, we always talk about that. One of the only ones in the biz that is proud of the fast food. We know it's bad, but we know it's a part of the North American diet. You just gotta you gotta get a little bit in there. You gotta get a, a smidgen of it in time to time because let me tell you, Henry VIII he'd be eating that stuff just like Trump did, just like fucking Trump did. <sighs> but camera, um, yeah, yeah. Let's get to that shit. Okay, all that other shit. Here we go. I cannot believe that Al Pacino and Robert De Niro are having fucking babies. One is 79. Pacino is like 83. What the fucking hell is this shit of these old guys? Just shows how much money they have. Doesn't matter. They're like, their kids are never going to know who they are. They're probably both going to be dead within five years. And they're going to have kids. They're going to have to grow up watching their movies and stuff, being like, what was he like? Was it Scent of a Woman? Was it Heat? Should we watch Heat? We can get two for one. Get get De Niro's kid over, Pacino's kid. Watch Heat. Is this them? Or is it Meet the Fockers? Did Pacino, is it the, the, the Dunkin' Donuts commercial? Is that the real Pacino that none of us know? Just insane. You know how pissed off women must be when they saw that? When they saw that, you know, like they got to start worrying about this shit when they're like in their late thirties that they're gonna they're gonna miss their shot. And these two fucking guys, they're so old, they're so old and decrepit, and they're having babies with people that were like born when they were fifty. Man, it's mental. It's mental. It's dumb. Life is dumb, and that's just one of the things that you have to. You just have to accept, unfortunately. It is the middle of June. We are close to summer, which means sports are over. The Denver Nuggets have won the NBA championship. The Vegas Golden Knights have won the Stanley Cup in the NHL. The Vegas Golden Knights, you have to pour one out for these guys. This team started in 2017. They built a team from an expansion draft, which meant all the other teams had to protect their best players, left shitty ones available or ones that were not stars. And then Vegas had to pick one per team and build this team. And they did. And then from there, they were able to make trades and, you know, they kept five or six of them for this cup run, but they also had to start their season after the worst mass shooting in American history in their city. The Vegas shooting. There's a crazy doc called 11 Minutes. I can't remember what it's on. It's on one of the streamers. But it's all kind of from the perspective of the people that were down in that concert. How fucking crazy it was where they didn't know what was going on, where the bullets were coming from. It just made no fucking sense. So that year is when they started their season. It was Vegas strong. It was just like, it was heavy. It was a heavy way to to drop the puck the first time when you've had this horrible tragedy. And they went to the Stanley Cup their first year they lost. They've been like a playoff team every year. I think one year they missed the playoffs just slightly. And then they, you know, made some trades, won the cup this year. They did it. The Vegas Golden Knights have a cup. It's just, uh, you got to pour one out for them because that is, Incredible. If you are a fan of any sport, you got to respect what the Vegas Golden Knights have done. Okay? You got to respect it. Okay, so the other, the last shit I'll talk about here is we get, we get off with our first June pod, episode 98. So I've been talking a little bit about this lockout that's been going on with actors in Canada. And our union, they kind of had an agreement with another association. 
and we had to vote on it. I voted against it. It ended up passing today. 80% of actors in the union who could vote voted to ratify it. And you know what? It's totally fine. If you were taking cuts, the raises they gave us it did not have any any comparison to inflation. There's going to be some major cuts to the uh, uh, residuals that we get. It's 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 a bit of a bummer. It is a bit of a bummer to see, but they were pulling on our heartstrings. These a lot of people are out of work. I guess a lot of these actors also have families. That it makes it even harder. And and they're th- th- this agreement it, it really targets our our heartstrings as actors of where you know we we started from like a pay what you can background. If you were a performer, you worked for nothing, and you it took a long time to get paid to be treated like a professional. And it's kind of like, it's sad in that sense. I feel bad for all the actors because I think this is going to, it's going to really change the industry. I think it's going to, I think people are going to just stop. I think it's, it's just not going to be as lucrative anymore because there just isn't enough work in Canada. And that's a big reason why we need to be paid what we're worth. And now we've accepted that we're worth less. And that's a, that's a bummer. That's a bummer to see. So my only hope, you know, is that uh, the ICA, Scott Knox, you see you see these as cuts. You see these as difficult cuts that we've agreed to, and you come back to the board, and you accept that this is as far as we're willing to go. It's just the way it is. Someone's got to lose, right? And it looks like the actors, we're going back, baby. We're going back to like the old times when we're just like dressing up like ladies and doing Shakespeare in the fucking park. That's where it's going to go. We're going to go back to making fuck all. And we're going to have AI Tom Hanks doing movies for the next 200 years. (laughs) We won't need fucking anybody. AI is going to come. It's going to replace everything. It's just so stupid. But if we can't pay for it, then it's kind of fucking worthless, right? That's it. I'm done. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining me on this one. All the people that have been listening across this planet that have been picking it up in Germany, in uh, friggin' South Africa, Russia, you know, China, probably just spies checking in because, you know, I talk shit sometimes. That's cool. We'll see you in a couple weeks. The end of June, we'll get that one in, 99. And then it's 100. I got to get a guess for 100, right, folks? I've been teasing you with it. See you then.